Hey friends, we're live. We're live. It's Four Center, a special edition. This is Four Center, a show about Star Wars, pop culture, and life itself. But we got to be honest, today we are focusing on that little thing called Bad Batch Season 3 trailer, Joseph. Uh, good morning. <laughs> good. Oh, that's the wrong one. That's what I was delayed for. That's the yep. right, kind of the right one, kind of the right one. <laughs> Uh, oh, stop it, theme. Stop I love it. You, but stop, uh, it. stop it. Get out of here, you theme. You <laughs> this is like me. if the old Tonight Show started and it was just Ed McMahon running all the tech. <laughs> all the tech. Uh, <laughs> and I'm still in a, a massive amount of pain. So sitting is, is, is not good. But anyways, we're here to celebrate joy, Joseph, aren't we? Yeah. Well, you know what? <laughs> I think being excited for something, but also in horrible pain is a perfect way to start off a discussion about the Bad Batch television show. Uh, yeah. We are very excited uh, to be talking about the Bad Batch Season 3 trailer. Uh, it dropped right before we started recording our deep dive uh, show yesterday. So we talked a little bit about it, but now we are going to dive into uh, the trailer, but also the season and just the excitement for the show. Right, Ken? Absolutely. And it was uh, it was truly just as we were about to record. I was going to my email to make sure Jennifer had the link to get in. And I saw the email literally populate. You know when an email shows up and you're like, ah, oh, the new phone books are here. And like, yay. And it was Disney drops trailer. Oh, no. So we uh, we had a lot of fun doing our quick reactions yesterday. But we we knew today was the day to get in a little deeper. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so if you have uh, any questions, feel free to put them in the chat. We'll, we'll try to kind of keep up as we go. But then we will also just take a bunch of questions towards the end. As always, uh, I just I, I can't broadcast with Ken without writing a little rundown. A little uh, section yeah. of notes of things we want to be sure to talk about. So we're going to talk through some of the topics that we want to be sure to cover. Uh, we will get your thoughts in the chat as we go. And we will, of course, grab questions uh, along the way and at the end. Uh, if you are inclined to do so, Super Chats are wonderful. We're really working hard to uh, keep making Force Center our part-time day job where we can <laughs> really enjoy doing this, put our backs into doing this. Uh, but also make it so that we can do other creative things. We can pursue our loves, keep doing Force Center, and uh, and not uh, worry about where we're going to sleep at night. <laughs> <laughs> not to put too fine a point on it. Anyway, point yeah, is, I'll, I'll, I'll be honest well. with you. I'd like to afford a chiropractor again. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> yes. So um, obviously there, there's, uh, you know, specific details of the season that were released uh, along with the trailer. A total of 15 episodes in the third and final season, starting on February 21st, going through May 1st with some episodes doubled up. It's exciting to see uh, when the episodes would be. I wrote them down in my calendar. I'm a little mm. nervous that I did that because they can always still change with streaming, but I feel like uh, they're, they're trying to put their best foot forward by saying, here are the dates. Hope those are the dates. Mm. I just want to talk right away about uh, Asajj Ventress, Ken. Yeah. Uh, she was the pop at the end of the trailer. That is what has been dominating uh, Star Wars discourse over the last 24 hours or so. So I want to talk a little bit more uh, about Asajj now that some new details have emerged, uh, and then we can get uh, into the heart of Bad Batch and, you know, along the way, talk about how Asajj affects the heart of Bad Batch. Yeah. So um, we, we were caught off guard, reeling, flailing at the yeah. beginning of our recording yesterday when we knew nothing. Uh, our friend Alex Damon from Star Wars Explained kindly texted Ken in the middle of our recording <laughs> with more context with the wonderful quote from the producer Brad Rao uh, yeah. about, yeah. Uh, hey, we're going to respect the novel Dark Disciple. Since then, yeah. as I'm sure many people have already seen, but, but I want to clarify just in case, the StarWars.com databank for Saj Ventress, uh, the databank entries for, for the main characters have that like kind of paragraph at the top, but if you scroll down, there's more detail. And at the very end of her StarWars.com databank page, uh, it her entry has been amended. It now yeah. says, ultimately, Ventress sacrificed herself to save Quinlan's life, taking the brunt of Dooku's force lightning during their final confrontation. But... That wasn't the end of Asajj's story, Ellipsis. Mm -hmm. uh, so <laughs> uh, there, there's that. And as many other uh, Star Wars fans, uh, I think, who have read Dark Disciple before or, or haven't got around to it, but have it on their bookshelf, uh, I, I, I felt like, ah, this is the time to have a literal Star Wars library in my home. And mm -hmm. I went to my shelf and picked up a tome to do some research and uh, reread the ending of Dark Disciple. And was ah. reminded, because I can't keep all the details in my head, that the end of Dark Disciple is uh, Obi-Wan and Quinlan 
lowering Asajj's mm. body into a mm. primordial pit of mystery and energy in the Night Sister home on Dathomir. Mm -hmm. So, in the realm of discussion that that Star Wars fans are going to have about you know, how many characters can come back somehow blank returned, etc. You know, Darth Maul was <laughs> cut in half and thrown down a, a yeah. power generator shaft hole. Uh, Asajj mm -hmm. was lowered into a mystical pit of her uh, home planet of yeah. Night Sisters who resurrect people with dark magic that the planet is brimming with. So yeah. the somehow and somehow Asajj returned does seem... A, a little uh, calmer uh, looking at all that. I, I like that you pulled that off your shelf and I was looking a little a bit at that entry as well. And look, it's it's part of the fun. And, and I think there's a discussion to be had of, hey, when someone's gone, they're gone. Not, not <laughs> you know, don't insert your Luke quote right here, but just like, hey, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think we can discuss too the possibilities of, you know, we didn't see tech hit the ground We're like there's there's things you know but it's the emotional impact that i think people worry about right if you if you go through that in that sad ending and uh, bittersweet i guess i would say of that that book with, with boss and kenobi and her you know you experience something and suddenly you're like it's like a prank and i hate pranks right when when suddenly someone pops out and goes hey the, the monster is me the whole time your buddy like i hate that so i i understand that side of the discussion but we're gonna get to the positives of it because i think there's so much so much value and 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 and, and uh, just uh, just fun kind of speculation about her being around. Yeah, absolutely. And and I think for me, rereading um, the, the final chapters of of her actual sacrifice of her dialogue with uh, Quinlan, um, mm -hmm. saying it's time, let me go. There's reading the book. There's definitely a sense of closure, a sense of sacrifice, a sense of letting go. So I can understand yeah. why people who really love that story would feel like, well, that, there was that narrative beat. Um, I also just think this is so in line with, uh, uh, you know, the the story that Floney tells of just walking down the hall and, and George Lucas pulls him aside and goes, hey, bring Darth Maul back. <laughs> Floney's yeah. like, yeah, oh, like, doesn't matter. Uh, doesn't matter. Figure it out. Somehow Maul returned. You figure it out. I think the thing is about with Star Wars there for me, there are certain lines of, yeah, there's some characters I wouldn't want to come back, but particularly yeah. dealing with a mystical character. I, I'm so less concerned about the how and more about, is there a narrative reason? Mm -hmm. And even, even mm -hmm. creators going that made that choice made sense to us at the time, but what's mm -hmm. the value of this character? Is it worth it to tell more story with the character? And I think a lot of fans feel like even if we want to kind of poke fun at, at there's not a ton of clarity on Maul's return. You know, yeah. his his right. desire for revenge kept him alive <laughs> torso only. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. For a long time. Yeah. Um, it, 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 but I think so many fans are happy with it because the storytelling value of Maul was high. So I want to get mm -hmm. into uh, what, what you were hinting at there, Ken, of mm -hmm. what is valuable or interesting about Asajj uh, returning to life in this era uh, post fall of the Republic, the beginning, the dawn of the empire mm. and on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll start by looking at the, the interesting side of it is, is, is whether it's in the, um, whether she she's in the current story or uh, a look back, a flashback of who, and I, I know a lot of people, a lot of people in our comments yesterday were like, "It's absolutely not a flashback." You, you don't know that. Number one, two, uh, it seems even with the data bank entry being changed, yeah, they're setting us up for, hey, yeah, you know, she she she's back in some way. This isn't a mm -hmm. uh, leap leap back in time, and I, I I understand that, but we also don't know until the episodes air. True, uh, but uh, this idea of. Uh, no matter what it is, if, if it's a flashback, uh, a callback, uh, a current story, she's there. The, sh her name, her character is in the present time in fandom. And that's great. Mm -hmm. There's a great value there because she's she's a, a beloved and important character for what I kind of think a little bit of that lost generation of Star Wars fans, the Clone mm. Wars generation. Uh, the generation that was the Ahsoka generation, the one that was like this. No, this is our Star Wars. It's on Cartoon Network every Friday night at 9.30. That's Star Wars to me. And they're sometimes skipped over in a lot of these generational Star Wars conversations. And Asajj is, is important. And I know she, I know where she first showed up and I know where her story first started. But in Clone Wars, it becomes something else. Thanks in large part. Her name will come up a lot today to Katie Lucas. Uh, so I think there's just, it's interesting and, and, and valuable to have that character back for those people that mean so much is where I'll start. And, and there's great story value we'll go into but i'll kick it back to you on that of just like you know she was mentioned in ahsoka we all got excited yeah this yeah is just, it, 
acknowledging her existence in, in yeah. Yeah, live action, he, he hearing her name on the lips of Hayden Christensen, Anakin. Yeah, it was, right? was uh, a, a thrill. I think that's really great to point out that it, there's value in the character being here. Um, it would seem like from StarWars.com putting it on the data bank that there's an intent to move the character forward. It's forward the, yeah, yeah. Pretty clear. But you're right. E even if it is two seconds of her in, in, the, in the timeline of Bad Batch, but the flashback, whatever, the character being mm -hmm. uh, in the yeah. conversation is of value. I yeah. think the character surviving and moving forward is of such great value because of the nature of the character. I mean, she she's a great character, mm -hmm. and, and when a character passes, you want more of them. Um, but the fact that her character is about being a survivor, and she kind of got to her her ultimate win as a as a person in the Dark Disciple novel. She made great strides in the Clone Wars stepping mm. away from dooku accepting that she'd been manipulated by the the sith uh seeing uh, uh helping ahsoka and mm -hmm. bonding with ahsoka as someone who's also been kind of adrift from their the the order that was supposed to be there for them um yeah. but falling in love with with quinlan and letting herself truly feel you know love joy she's this um She's just a, a, a survivor who has had this victory of self-determination of my yeah. entire life has been determined by, you know, the Night Sisters, by the mm -hmm. Jedi, by the mm -hmm. Sith. I am entirely deciding who I am and what I want to be. Uh, that's uh, that's a great moment for the character to to start from and a great thing to kind of focus on in hard times is a, a self-determined person who gets a win. I absolutely love what you're saying, and you're making me think of dusty roads and hard times. Yeah, look, uh, she's a trauma survivor. She's someone who went on a journey to who dis discover who she was, had her identity challenged constantly by change and circumstance, and then uh, you know emerged through that uh, with the choices, like you said. There's also this big thing of, of home with her, right? There's that great mm -hmm. powerful moment of returning to Mother Talzin and the, the embrace, and it feels like home, but that certainly has changed. And, and she returned home, but had to have home redefined. And you, you just take the name out of that list of things both you and I are talking about. And you're like, oh, Bad Batch. You're talking about Bad Batch? And and that's why I'm so intrigued by even if she, even if it's just an episode, you know, I, I don't think she's here for a guest star role across eight, you know, recurring guest star role across eight episodes. I think there's probably one or two good, big, big powerful episodes. At least that's maybe an expectation I'm going to set for myself uh, after the Gungi debacle of 2023, <laughs> right? Um but but the, every, she belongs in this story. She belongs in this timeline of the Star Wars saga in which everyone is like, who are we now? What are we mm -hmm. now? What is this? You got to serve someone. Is it this or that? It, it, it's it's it, she belongs right here in the story. It's an interesting decision because of that. Yeah. And we you, you jumped ahead of a great uh, super chat here from JC. Thank you. Who sent in mm. how many episodes we think have a sash? One, two. <laughs> yeah. I, I think that I think that's the uh, a great guesstimate. I'm bracing myself for one. I would mm -hmm. love it to be a, a two episode yeah. arc. Um, yeah. But I think I love what you're saying, Ken. I think for me, there's value <clears throat> in the character mm -hmm. moving forward. And if they had announced like, hey, there's a live action Asajj show. It's about her. I, I'd be thrilled. Mm -hmm. But looking at her in the context of Bad Batch, uh, I think so much what the, the clones are wrestling with is everything we believed in was a lie how do we lead a worthwhile life in a horrible time there's been mm -hmm. such clear discussions between the clones about what are we fighting for we mm -hmm. don't think we can actually topple this empire so what's right. worth laying down our lives for it's well it's to find right. some peace it's to save one another um what the the clones uh, you could not find a better expert in accepting that she's probably not going to kill the sith because mm -hmm. she tried a lot <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah with dooku trust right me. it hurt yeah, you can't accepting, do yeah. <laughs> accepting that this isn't the mission the mission isn't to change the galaxy and topple mm -hmm. the empire the mission is how do i lead a worthwhile self-actualized life under the shadow of absolute horror Mm -hmm. that's a Saj Ventress's Ted talk, I think in this era, you know? Yeah. Uh, and, and I think yeah. that has such great rhythm of like, however she encounters the clones, if she's on a bounty, you know, we can do some other wild speculation about what she's up yeah. to. Uh, 
But mm -hmm. in terms of how does she make sense in this show and what does she mean to the main characters? She's got a lot of experience going through the decisions in the trauma that they're going through. And also you're making it sound like she's going to tell you, run for local city office. That's where you could <laughs> aff affect change. But I think that's part of what uh, she brings to it. And yeah, going back to what I said about about home, uh, look at look at the batch. I, I think they at some point thought, ah, Pabu, we got a new home. We got fishing. We got games. We got food. We got friends. And 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 that's gone. I think even in the trailer, there's enough evidence. I did watch Star Wars explain, explain videos yesterday. There's enough ev evidence to think the Empire comes to Pabu because that's kind of the Empire will come to you. There's that great mm -hmm. quote. In there. They're, they're coming for all of you. Uh, and so, what? Who are you in that? And 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 home is this difference. Uh, uh, sense. It's this uh, sense of those where you are and who's around you more than uh, where you're at. So uh, she's got, a, you know, you want to know about home? Let me tell you about home. <laughs> I've been home a few times. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, so I think, you know, we're talking about like the the sort of uh, thematic, the emotional, what does it mean? But, but we're also excited to talk about like the plot. What's she up to and why? Yeah. Who else is she going to encounter? Uh, and, and along those lines, our, our friend Alex Damon has a wonderful super chat. Thank you. That's very mm -hmm. kind of you, Alex. Uh, he says, if you give a Star Wars fan an Asajj Ventress, they're going to want a Quinlan Voss. <laughs> Do you think the two of them will be together again? Of course, uh, Quinlan Voss has, has yeah. you know, been on people's minds since he was listed in Orabesh as a Jedi they haven't mm -hmm. tracked down yet in the Darth Vader comics. And then, of course, yeah. uh, in the Kenobi series, Kenobi being happy to see that Quinlan uh, was involved with the path or helped uh, by the path. Uh, in the Kenobi mm -hmm. television show. I, I think for me, an interesting idea. Th this is just total like head cannon. Wouldn't this be cool if. Mm. If Asajj has, you know, come back to life naturally yeah. or Marin raised her, or, you know, yeah, whatever right. cool thing happens or or the I planet like Dathomir is just like, you're not done, sister. <laughs> and the <laughs> planet gets her back, out. Her back <laughs> out, you know, um, w whatever that story is. What yeah. would she? What would she want? Why would she? She was bounty hunting at the end of Clone Wars to just be like, I don't mm -hmm. know what else to do with myself. Right. I'll provide for myself. Right. But if she went through love, death, and resurrection, is she just back to like, got to get by somehow? Bounty hunting, maybe. But the head cannon that popped to me is like, Quinlan survived Order sixty six, but he's near death. Needs to be provided for. Needs to be hidden. What if she was mm -hmm. out bounty hunting to basically? keep mm -hmm. Quinlan safe and alive. That would yeah. be a really interesting question to me too, because th the Quinlan thing is, is yeah, we want to see him. He, he's one of my favorite Jedi. They have a romantic yeah. relationship, mm -hmm. but he also ties into bad batch because bad batch is concerned with all of the survivors of the trauma of this era. Yeah. That, that really kind of works for me on, on a, on a plot level of, of why should we be doing that? And, you know, I, I still, you know, she's a goth, to her heart so she she might be helping uh, you know the the path but not like she's not she's not nice about it you know I mean, she's still got her she's still got her vengeance in her i, I like this idea of uh, assage always going to be assage but but uh you know what i mean like she but she sees the value in what they're doing she sees the value of helping survivors she sees the value of the bigger fight and again what are what her places is in that fight. I, I you're right i don't think she's thinking all right cool find me where palpatine is i'm going to start charging in there uh, this is just not realistic. Uh, so uh, I, I can I can kind of dig with that, dig that yeah. plot. And I don't know if there's you know room for it or reason for it in the context of the Bad Batch, but just having her alive to get the uh, rundown of what's been going down with the Sith, yeah. like uh, to, to have Asajj Ventress laugh over Dooku's um, severed head. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, that's a joy moment for a character like Asajj Ventress. And yeah. You know, we've told this story a lot. I'm not saying Bad Batch is going to go there. I'm just thinking through what Asajj knows and feels. I feel like Asajj is a character who would like, yeah, that, that Vader guy's Anakin. Yeah, I'm, I'm aware. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. It's interesting to think of what, you know, her takes on all of this. Yeah, God, there's, I didn't grow up thinking that many people knew, uh, you know, and by that many people, is it like two or three? But uh, Well, yeah, yeah in, the, in, the, in the grand scheme of things. But yes, yeah. from our perspective is, is, you know, getting to know inside the minds of everybody, uh, all the characters, it does start yeah. to seem like, eh, uh, yeah, everybody's like everybody's clocking it <laughs> yeah <laughs> which is yeah of course not true given the you know zillions of people in the galaxy yeah. a lot of people are mentioning in the chats uh the the importance of the path and and i do think that the the path uh that was introduced in kenobi this lifeline for jedi 
um, and, and young force sensitives, I, I could definitely see Bad Batch dealing with that. I could definitely see Asajj in Quinlan having a hand in creating it. Uh, absolutely. Mm. Oh, we got a mm. question from on that topic from Michael Gibbons of Media. Michael says, do you think we could see a similar path established like we saw in the Kenobi show, but for clones, maybe a combined Jedi clone path that would repair the damaged trust between the two groups? Oh, <laughs> the friends that hide together <laughs> stay together. <laughs> I like that. I like that. I, I yeah, I don't know that answer just in terms of speculation, but I do like the idea. I've had that a few times of like, we know clones go on, right? Clones pop up in, in, in various places, and um, you know, uh, K Kenobi series comes to mind later on, mm -hmm. and stuff in the in the sequel era that, that clones could survive, um, aged or not, or whatever goes on to their bodies. I know there's some questions around that, but yeah, I, I, I thought of like, it's we're gonna have some some happy endings, right? <laughs> Like the clones aren't, Palpatine would love to have the clones. Hemlock would have the clones erased or studied or used for experiments. That's what Rampart wanted, but but that's not the case. So so is there a way, is there a life uh, that they can find and carve out and how do they do it? You know, Pabu seemed great at the time, but anything that seems too great uh, is obviously not going to stick around. So I like that idea, a clone path. Yeah. Yeah, Johnny C. Uh, Books and Comics says, give me a The Past show with Reva and Quinlan with Ventress as a recurring character. That, Interesting. That is a, yeah. a very exciting idea to me. Uh, people yeah. are talking about Senator Chuchi as well, which re uh, reminds me of one of the other things I really like about Asajj Ventress being specifically in The Bad Batch is I, mm -hmm. I think one of the missions of Bad Batch has been, <laughs> yeah, it's like the, the Godfather scene where they have the one day to, to settle everything. It's like, mm. this is our one last show to settle anything left <laughs> from the Clone Wars. We've got our final season. We've okay. focused on Ahsoka and Rex. We finished their story. We tied it back to the tragedy of Anakin's fall. Mm -hmm. But now, like, uh, we got a Chuchi. We, we got a Zillow <laughs> Beast. We got a Gregor and Wolf. Like, uh, well, uh, it feels so much like it is finishing all business yeah in and we're going to talk more about boba fett but but it, it is also kind of getting to like yep finishing individual arcs that were planned that didn't get completed and now they're changed yeah. and different but but finishing all business i love yeah well you know and sean room has the question does that mean barris will be in the season possibly that barris is a, <laughs> is, a, is a is a dangling participle for sure but what you're saying joseph is not true until we know uh what happened uh and where meber gascon is then that's i won't accept it until the leader of the d squad shows up in this series <laughs> you're right if we're settling all business so uh, we, we do need uh meber gascon at least in the in the background <laughs> yeah <laughs> Yeah, it'd be great. Uh, um, yeah, what a lot of people are, are talking about Ahsoka beyond, or uh, rather Asajj beyond mm -hmm. uh, the Bad Batch series. I think we're gonna stay uh, a little bit more focused focused on Bad Batch, mm -hmm. but I I do think it it, it isn't wild fan dreaming uh, to think of where Asajj could go if she survived all the way through Galactic Civil War to the to the New Republic era. She, she has a relationship with Ahsoka and an interesting one that was forged mm -hmm, mm -hmm. from them, from Asajj, you know, helping her out. Um, yeah, yeah. The, uh, you know, the the whole Night Sisters coming back to Dathomir seems like, well, maybe you would want an OG Night mm. Sister <laughs> like yeah. Asajj involved yeah. in that. So yeah. how do you feel about the possibility of, great, we'll, we'll see Asajj's story, it will intersect briefly uh, mm. in thematically beautifully i'm sure with the bad batch but then the character is around to join us in the in the future in the new republic order um i'm gonna uh, uh it's um a popular opinion maybe i i don't necessarily want her there uh doesn't mean that i uh, won't ex enjoy an exploration of that idea i like the idea of this is kind of it i don't need to spin off a connection uh, and i don't mean that cynically i just i i yeah i want i want this character to have some sort of happy ending at some point Mm -hmm. uh so maybe that's what's coloring my de decision here on this answer is is yeah you know, continuing the story relating to ah ahsoka is great the night sisters the grandmothers yeah i i, I think there's something a lot uh, there's something fun there but you know her showing up helping them and going cool i got a life to live is something i'd be happy with as well yeah um so a, a couple of people uh are, are are bringing up um in, in my <laughs> 
a uh, big call for settling all issues. Uh, people are very really saying, like, <laughs> you know, that Barris Afi. <laughs> yeah, Barris. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a bit of an issue. Um, the the uh, the the uh, more that Floney gets to tell stories, and and this is mm. you know, Floney is not the head writer of this. I'm I'm sure mm. he is involved, mm. but the the credits are the credits. Jennifer Corbett is the writer leading leading the charge. Uh, mm. I think within that. Uh, there could be a don't touch Barris Hoffie because because I still got something coming up uh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. for her. How do you feel about the the Barris Hoffie of it all? Are you expecting her to pop up in Bad Batch? Or are you expecting her to be saved through way down the line because she's old, ancient uh, uh, business for Ahsoka to deal with? I, I Yeah, I think it feels more appropriate for Ahsoka. I, I, I definitely thought. Uh, Bad Batch last season could have been a spot. I definitely thought Ahsoka the series could have been a spot. There's a lot of places. We got more Tales of the Jedi showing up. I, I think that'd be an interesting spot to, to deal with some of it. Uh, Barris is an interesting character that I want more of, but also I, I don't think they missed the window. I think they're creating windows of opportunity, but there seemed mm -hmm. like a point in time where this might have been in the rearview mirror for me. Uh, but uh, I, I think somewhere down the line with Ahsoka is more, makes more sense to me. Yeah, the more Barris is saved, at least for me, the more it uh, whets my appetite to do something yep. big and significant and focused yep. with the character. And, you know, none of us had seen the Ahsoka show, but, you know, yeah. so when the trailer was out and we didn't really know how important, uh, you know, this Inquisitor looking figure is and people are like, "Ooh, Barris Afi, great. Once yeah. you actually see the, the Ahsoka show, like, I don't want Barris as like it, uh, a hired gun assassin. <laughs> you know, to be dealt, dealt with. I want her in whatever story form to be the main conflict, most likely for Ahsoka. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe discussion for another time, but like I, I at, at this point in Ahsoka season two, I don't know if I see a place in, in her, for her in the story yet. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. I think they can get there. But yeah, I think as they're dealing with the stuff on Peridium, I don't know, maybe she's already on Peridia. <laughs> maybe Barris, maybe Barris and Asajj are already on Peridia and they, <laughs> they're just yeah. hanging out waiting to solve all this. You know, they open the portal <laughs> to Morris yeah. and Barris is like, I've been waiting. <laughs> We've been waiting. <laughs> uh, okay, we are going to uh, move on from yeah. uh, uh, Asajj, because this could be an entire Asajj episode, to some more general Bad Batch talk. I'm sure Asajj will keep coming up, and, and we've yeah. got some questions uh, set aside. I do want to share this super chat here uh, from VLMG. Thank you very much. Very kind. Two things. One. From the titles revealed, what's the most intriguing for you? And two, I've passed my C1 Cambridge exam. Thanks to listening to you. Thanks. Thank you. Happy. I, I don't know how we helped, but I'm extremely happy we did help. <laughs> right, Ken? Uh, yeah, Victor, congratulations. Uh, uh, you uh, deserve it. You work so hard. And, and if we, you know, help you a lot, relax while you're studying, uh, uh, we appreciate you being around. As I'm, yeah, as absolutely. I look up the titles here. I'm getting the titles. Me up. too. I, I really, when I pulled up this question, I was like, oh no, Ken and I are both going to disengage from the camera and Google. Yeah, <laughs> look down. Uh, I got him. I got him. Um, all right, all right. Here's what I like. Uh, look, I, I think it's it's May first. The Calvary has arrived. I mean, come on, clear. That's 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 a great way to end the series. And where mm. are we going? And who's who's there? Does that mean we getting? You know, now we get to see where. Rex and Gregor Wolf are heading off to, and uh, you know, uh, Gunji shows back up. Who knows? I like that there. Uh, juggernaut, because we can okay. see the Juggernaut in the trailer. I like that. You yeah, know. Gunji's bad day. That's the best yes. one. No, yeah, that's, that's the best one. day. I, yeah, I, I'm just yeah. fascinated by the titles because I, I think it's a thing in Star Wars where you know Lucas uh, kind of pushed toward the pulp in the titles to the point even back yeah. in 2000 whatever when a, the title Attack of the Clones was announced and people were like what and I was like yeah. but that's that's what he based it on. Like it. Uh, yeah. But in general, Star Wars has been like let's let's be a little bit more serious with our titles. Um, so I gravitate toward the ones that still do have a flavor of of pulp uh so mm -hmm. shadows of tantus episode yeah. three I, I just love the title everybody i think is very excited for all of the tantus business shadows of tantus mm. also does sound like some naughty star wars videotape someone would have given me in 1997 <laughs> i'm a little upset by that uh but uh, uh, shadows of tantus uh, is an extremely exciting yeah. title i do like that these titles are also they're they're just enough for you to go like ooh, they're on point but they don't tell you much even the last yeah. one, the cavalry has arrived, makes right. you kind of fist pump and go, I hope, I, oh, please, please, could yeah. it work out for them? You know? Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. No, absolutely. Look, even something like the return, you're like, oh, is that a Saj? Or no, is that crosshair? Is that crosshair return into the fold? Like, uh, uh, there's things uh, I, I really like about that. Yeah, the harbinger, uh, you know, a harbinger of things to come. Cool, give me that. Identity crisis is really interesting. That's some um, identity crisis, mm-hmm. point of no return on April 3rd. Uh, might be, Ooh. oh man, I think I'm heading to Boston there around that time. Okay, all right, set my DVRs. Um, I really like that, the idea, because <laughs> identity being so key to this series, and then this point of no return speaks of a big decision uh, with whatever they're doing uh, towards the final four episodes. That's a cool tra- That's a cool title. I like that. That's yeah. my vote. Yeah. Point of No Return is also one of my favorite Sinatra albums, so this is just all coming <laughs> together for me. I love it. Absolutely yeah. love it. Uh, um, and Sean Room uh, checks in, says the Calvary has arrived. Is apparently the first line of the, the batch spoke in Clone Wars season seven, mm, which is mm. beg, begs a rewatch. I, I it's on my list to squeeze in. Can I squeeze in all a previous season, eleven seasons of Kirby enthusiasm and the Bad Batch and Clone Wars season seven before these all start? That's my that's my challenge in the next couple weeks. Yeah, <laughs> that's a that is a, a thrilling challenge. I got to keep reading a, a High Republic book. Uh, and see uh, and see if uh, the Bad Bat shows up there. Uh, that's a joke. Obviously not. Um, Ken, <laughs> I, I did want to just touch very briefly on on mm-hmm. why why you and I do love the Bad Batch. We've, we've talked yeah. about it a bunch. But the reason that I wanted to touch on it before we get into more de- details of the trailer is I, I think sometimes um, because it doesn't get talked about as much because mm-hmm. there are just not as many people watch animation, I forget that... It, the the fan pool might be smaller, but the love is deep, strong. And when when I saw on social media this weekend, I was looking for something else, and I saw how many people were like Bad Batch trailer when and seeing the explosion yeah. of excitement about that, and just really being reminded um, that I don't know what the numbers are for Bad Batch, but the people who are there love the living hell out of it. Yeah, it, it's just exciting. It's just thrilling. It's just nice to be in a in a place of of love. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, so yeah. why do you? So I just wanted to spend some time on love, Ken. Uh, why do uh, you love too. Bad Batch? Uh, I also have a Chihuahua that just ran into my studio. So uh, hi, Franny. Uh, I love Bad Batch. Um, part of, I'll, let me start. Part of the reason I love it is it comes from a point of it surprised me. It surprised me because uh, I felt that when this was announced, it was a bit of a letdown for me. Uh, I I liked those four episodes in season seven, but I was like, ah, yeah, you know, all right, more clones. It just I don't know. And I I was very cynical about it. I was very cynical about it. Mm-hmm. And um, I liked it right from the start. I, I, I even warmed up more season one, but by season two, I, I am I'm just so pulled in by. Uh, the series and and I often refer to it as like my favorite uh, a season of Star Wars television so far talking about season two and I think a lot of that has to do with um, I think the through lines of, of the series is one of the things I need to be reminded of as a Star Wars fan I, I forgot about the clones as living beings I, I forgot about them uh, I forgot that this this characters created and, and used as pawns for fighting uh, you know and 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 and, and they're fighting to to find their place in that, you know, who they are in that mm-hmm. and that it doesn't just simply end and that some do, do just want them in uh, and, and they're fighting to have the choice to be something more, right? That that I never spent a lot of time ruminating on that till uh, I think Clone Wars Season 7 dealt with it. It started to become clear all through the series, right? Punk, Krell, all that stuff. It was there, but I think I was, I myself as a fan, it was too just, it was too easy for me to put them on the shelf and this series kind of coming back going, no, we're going to surprise you. We're going to be about these Big things, plus the execution of it, the humor and the warmth, the action, uh, has moments that reminded me to have some fun as a Star Wars fan. And yet had mm-hmm. moments that are somber and sober. This is not shade against Andor, which is so overtly political, and I love it. Uh, I love telling people that Luthen Rail is a bad guy and you shouldn't look up to him. I love telling people that. But Bad Batch, I think, is 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 for me a, this is it's almost more political. In the way it's telling the story set in the Star Wars world, it it it's, it itself is reminding you what Star Wars is about. Uh, it's this whip smart adventure that's making you hear what it's saying week after week, and that just continues to surprise me every week, every episode. Yeah, no, I, I really agree with you. And my journey was the same. Where when it was first announced, I, I thought it was going to be a little bit more of like, "Yep, we'll deal with the fact that that they're dealing with the fallout of the Empire and the clones being phased out. But their mm-hmm. role in in that season seven of Clone Wars was so like, 
let's have fun with the A team in Star Wars. And yeah, you know, yeah. a, a little big, a little uh, over the top. Great, loved it. Uh, I did not expect the show to go where it did, which is the the depth of warmth, kindness, empathy, humanity combined with the absolute trauma tour. Yeah. Of the galaxy. The trauma tour. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I think the 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 depth of love to me comes from the fact that it is the ideas are such central original star wars idea it is about family it's mm -hmm. about hope it's about adventure it, it's repeated thematics uh, about the organic versus the mechanical so it's got all these great star wars ideas but then it to me it's it's doing something a little bit different in the way it's telling the, the story is that it's willing to be extremely mournful and somber mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. contrast that with wrecker yelling about fighting crabs mm -hmm. to some of the most heartbreaking ideas imagery in star wars the, some of those episodes in season two in particular is just like yeah. minimal storytelling that is deeply deeply beautifully artistic that in some ways is like you almost unique to animation because it is almost getting to the point of like expressionism where what's mm -hmm. going on with the characters is so simple, so brutal, so direct, and it's echoed in every bit of design. It's just beautifully artistic. But at the mm -hmm. end of the day, I think one of the things I love most about it is in our weird streaming era, this is a classic television show. We mm -hmm. tune in, or whatever mm -hmm. the correct verb is we're going to use, yeah, we, yeah. we tune in to our streaming service every week, because we love these characters. We love their relationship. We're charmed by these characters. We care about them. In some weeks, they have an adventure and hurt each other's feelings a little bit. <laughs> and then yeah. other weeks, horrific, devastating trauma. But we're just there for our family. And because the number of episodes, because the mix of big arc storytelling and episode by episode adventure, it, it's just a little bit more of a classic television show in structure That's and funny. i think it's given those of us who like it time to sink in and bond with these characters That's i i, I like that i like that connection I, i'm trying to think of the tv show that would it would truly connect to and i, I can't think of it in, in my uh, coffeeless morning state today but uh <laughs> There's something about that. And again, that's you and I love Kenobi. I love Andor. I love all the shows. We spend a lot of time with them. Um, there's just a new age of television that things are approached differently. It's not better or worse. It's just new. It's just where it is right now. And yeah, Bad Batch, it's not even just Saturday morning cartoon feel. It is, it is, it is, uh, it has the same, you know, you hit, you hit on something with me. It has the same vibe for me. I know this is just my journey, like appointment television where, oh, it's Thursday mm. at nine. I get to go hang out with the bar at Cheers. Yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and it's Makes deeper. Me feel like it's more... Deep Space Nine, like yeah, that's, that's how a great I feel example. About Deep Space Nine is like I love those characters. What's going on in yeah. the space station? Yeah, and it's it's more important uh, than Cheers, uh, you know, uh, except for a couple of the episodes. You know, I'm sure a uh, very special Cheers. Um, it, but it, yeah, it's got that vibe. It's it's got that family. It's got the connection. If you're in, if you're in with this family, Bad Badge, you, you absolutely uh, love hanging out with them. And I and I, I the people we talked to, I saw our buddy Brian Ward just said, you know, his his. Uh, uh, photoshops of Bad Batch are doing quite well on uh, the website known as X.com. And and yeah, there's a passionate fan base for the, the people who are in. There it is. Yeah. It, yeah. And it's it's just a great place to, to be in that there's a lot of passion. And I think the people who the show isn't really for them, they're just not watching. <laughs> so it's nice that we get to stay in, in a place of passion for the people who are who are there for it. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, and that's a bummer. I get it; it's a bummer. I've had some arguments, arguments with some friends over 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 not watching Bad Batch. It's you're, you're right to not watch anything. Um, I totally get yeah. that, but I think there's still some of that bias towards animation, and and, and, it, and it's tough to push that out. Yeah, no, absolutely. So let's talk a little bit about what's going to happen to our little family. All that's mm. left of our little family. Um, so Ken, we always like talking uh, about what do you feel like the trailer is telling you about the season you know according to this yeah. trailer the way it's structured what's included what do you feel like is at stake in season three of the bad batch i went around uh, the big themes of the found family and community that they've built is at stake that's the very thing at stake and that this idea that the fight doesn't end uh and and we're seeing it in terms of a war a fight pew 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 that stuff but but the the continued fight for their existence 
uh, goes on. And, and nothing is that simple. Uh, you don't just simply get to walk away. You don't simply get to reach the finish line. I think this is something that's echoed in Star Wars over and over. It's why I'm intrigued by new republics and new orders and everything. Like, cool, uh, you know, the, the victory is had. The Ewoks have danced. Now what? That doesn't mean this ends. And for them, they've redefined themselves. They kind of, like you've said uh, before in, in, in a wonderful way, of just like, this w the war isn't our fight. Our fight is those around us and all that being at stake. And if we lo leave one behind, then we leave them all. And that big line I said earlier, but they're coming for uh, all of you. Like that's, mm -hmm. uh, you don't get to leave anyone behind. You don't get to turn your back on one in this particular fight. Uh, and that that is what at stake. This found family we love. We talk about the theme of found family. It's being ripped apart. And that's what we have to fight for because that's what our battle is. Yeah. Uh, I, I really agree, and I feel like it is what has been at stake uh, throughout the the show, but really amping up in season two. Uh, the mm -hmm. the line uh, I, I thought that the end of the war would mean an end to losing more of our brothers. That's I was great. wrong. Is of course a great, uh, amazing uh, tech trauma uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> in mm -hmm. reminding you of the emotional stakes. But to me, it, it was about those conversations that uh, Hunter and Rex and Echo were having toward the end of season two that we we didn't get to choose the war we were born yeah. for um and it turns out we if we had we we wouldn't have fought it what we can do now is choose to fight for one another so to me what's mm -hmm. at stake is it's it's loyalty and survival i, I yeah. love that we've got lots of great stories I, I enjoyed some of the comics about uh kira going i got a plan let's take down the sith we've got mm -hmm. lots of stories of how, how are we going to stop this? How are we going to bring this down? It's what Andor is about. So there's something really powerful to have a, a, a story about a group of people going, we're experts on, on war, mm -hmm. and we can't win this battle right now. Yeah. So what we're going to do is, in the darkest time imaginable, how can we find hope? How can we find warmth? How can we find comfort and safety for one another? It, it's, a, it's a story of uh, you know survival, and, and I think it's a story of agency is it, the biggest mm -hmm. thing to me is the clones getting to choose what they fight for and when, since yeah. that is the show's dealt with so well, like we're born warriors and we're proud of being warriors. We're proud of being soldiers, I should say, mm -hmm. born soldiers and we're proud of it, but we want to choose what we fight for and we want to choose when we stop fighting. Yeah, and this idea that, uh, you know, we have dealt with this idea of we're just following orders and good soldiers follow orders. And you got the great line in the trailer, we don't follow orders too well, you know, or whatever the line was. Mm -hmm. But like, I like that's where that, but but it speaks to what you're saying of, yeah, no, we, we get to choose now. Uh, we we get to see where the value is for us uh, in terms of the fight, in terms of the saving, and and, and the realities of of you know yeah we, the four of us, five of us, the ten of us can't take on an entire pl uh, platoon of, of stormtroopers in this growing empire. But what can we do? We're not just running away. We're not just get, the idea of going to set up a shop on Pabu is a wonderful end goal. Uh, but that's not where they're at, and that's not necessarily even guaranteed. Uh, again, going back to what Asajj will tell you. Oh, yeah, you think you're safe? You think you're home? You think you found love? Oh, it, mm. it, it changes because you, you, the fight for the light will always be at play. Yeah. At stake. Absolutely. Uh, we got some great comments here. JC, thank you again for the kind super chat. A force center well said <laughs> to both of you. Uh, Maddie Gunner says, finding your path as opposed to walking the one laid out in front of you. Mm -hmm. Uh Brian saying, uh, Bad Batch is worth watching, even if it's just for the quality of the animation in musical uh, music. Mm -hmm. James Livingstone, The Bad Batch has turned out to be one of the most hauntingly beautiful pieces yeah. of storytelling in Star Wars. So it is really great to see uh, what everyone is responding to mm -hmm. and, and how the adventure, the family, just the, the beautiful uh, haunting tone is, is really great. It's um, yeah, I love that use yeah. of the word haunting. Yeah, I, yeah, some of those episodes in season two. That's why I love it. it it's it's haunting. It's absolutely that's a great, great, great word. Well said. Well, yeah, said. haunting is very, very good. Um, mm. I do want to talk about one of the other big things in the trailer, which is uh, hey, a lot of a lot of quality sheave time. Uh, we got some sheave. Emperor Emperor Palpatine chatting away. Uh, em Emperor Palpatine saying there is nothing of greater importance to secure the future of this empire. Whatever is needed to accomplish this goal, you will have it. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a lot of that, that's one of the I think one of the favorite fan things to talk about, along with uh, Asajj, is uh, ooh, 
what is the emperor's plot? And this trailer mm -hmm. is asking us to ask that because yeah. the, the the huge actual like it, it takes Palpatine a little while to say something. So that's like a lot of percentage <laughs> time of the trailer is that yeah. that line. I want to run something yeah. by you, Ken, and get your, yeah. your thoughts on my on my you know, uh, hopefully uh, responsible speculation. Okay. I know we got clones everywhere. I know we got a uh, uh, you know vats of uh, lurid <laughs> colors with with things floating in them. Uh, mm -hmm. I know we have the Zillow Beast and the Armor Desire. I think right. there will be. On, I think on Mountain Tantas there are many objectives. I think the the Zillow Beast Armor Project. Um, I think mm -hmm. there could be a side of Snoke. Uh, you know, I think a lot of people are uh, are feeling like, "Ooh, it's Snoke." Mm -hmm. That's what he's talking, or, or if not Snoke, just the project to, you yeah. know, make me uh, more bodies. Uh, uh, the project, yeah. uh, you know, Project Palpatine, live forever. Mm -hmm. And I think that that I would love for that to be touched on. I think it will be touched on. I think that there is a, a hint in Bad Batch season two of a different goal uh, mm -hmm. that's less about. Palpatine and his uh, his Sith uh, longevity, but more about the Empire itself. Um, this this takes okay. just a second, so bear with me. Yeah. In the uh, penultimate episode of season two, uh, there's the meeting on uh, Tarkin's home planet with reviewing <laughs> Imperial plans of control. And there's yeah. these two lines of dialogue. Tarkin says, the galaxy is at a critical juncture where allegiances were once divided. We must establish a comprehensive strategy for galactic unification to deter dissent and rampant self-interest. Toward that end, Dr. Hemlock, what do you have to report on your advanced science division? Mm -hmm. Hemlock responds in his creepy little whisper, the progress we are making in the field of cloning is of great importance to the emperor. Once we fully unlock the secrets previously known only to the Kaminoans, we will ensure an enlightened society through their advanced technology and molecular alteration. Mm. This conversation gets me really thinking not about Palpatine's goal of, of prolonging his, his own life with, you know, mm. cloning secrets and dark magic. Again, mm. I think that's there. But I feel like what they're talking about is how do we control anybody who questions mm -hmm. the Empire and how do we do it on mass? So mm -hmm. I think what they're talking about is some level of inhibitor chip like technology that can just be deployed on mass. Maybe it's not mm. even a mm. maybe it's inhibitor chip by Wi Fi that they can just fly mm -hmm. over Alderaan and go, you're all inhibited now. Oh, a a means of truly controlling people deeply. And the, the reason that I get obsessed on this is, is A, because it's kind of in line of what Hemlock's talking about, but because to me, it, it makes sense as a victory for the clones to end the clones yeah. on mass story is if the Imperials are going to use the clones to mm -hmm. take away the agency of everyone in the galaxy, the yeah. clones are defined by the fact that they were born and immediately had their agency taken away. And mm -hmm. what a great victory for them to be. We can't defeat the empire, but we can stop you from taking the agency away from the galaxy like you did to us. And mm -hmm. that's their kind of final mission. Many die, a few retire. There's something in that that to me feels <laughs> poetic in terms of what the Emperor's uh -huh. plot is. Yeah. Like I've said before, I've spent now 10 seasons sometimes just nodding at what you're saying, going, yep, that's great. Uh, and, and that's the best uh, I could do. Yeah, I, I really... Go into the Palpatine of it all. Yeah, 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 you know, I even joked, you know, unlocking the secrets of cloning, dark science, secrets of the Sith knew. Like, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and he's going to go to Moff Gideon, uh, who's got his uh, vats, and it all connects. Now, clearly, we discovered what was Moff Gideon after? Uh, he himself. <laughs> How can I make more of me? Because I'm mm -hmm. pretty great. That was his theme. And yeah, uh, Palpatine's theme is, is not, at this point, especially, isn't just getting more power. He's a, achieved unlimited power, so it is a lot about keeping uh, his position. He doesn't want to let go. That's the big uh, theme, uh, for, at least for me, behind his use in Rise of Skywalker. Make all the jokes you want about Poe Dameron's line. I think he's great. Mm -hmm. It has great value to be there for that part of the story. I don't let go. I don't change. I don't let the next generations in. That's his big push. But what you're talking about does, go, first of all, Hemlock's a tech bro. Let's not, Hemlock is a tech bro sitting there going, <laughs> you want to disrupt some things? I can disrupt some things. I can uh, disrupt well, people's minds. Yeah. 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 You, you, all your information is being taken via TikTok. Yeah. It, it, it's, uh, um, 
Palpatine. Let, we just we they just keep scrolling, Palps. Um, but I love what you're saying, so I'll do that thing sometimes where I put the money down on the roulette table next to your chips. <laughs> I like it, but because it connects to what the story is about, it is about the clones. Mm-hmm. It is about the clones. And what puts them at odd with Palpatine? This idea of Palpatine saying, I can't let go, which means I can't let anyone take this power. And we had this wonderful system that worked pretty darn well that removed all those pesky Jedi. And the people that did it were the beans they trust and fought with. <sighs> That'd be great. Imagine families turning on families. Imagine families turning mm. in their siblings, their family, their, their parents, their mm. children. A loyalty you know, program, yeah. A loyalty program. And it's not just one that you get at the at the Panera where you get a loyalty reward card and 10% off. This is too Palpatine. And how do we ensure it? And the secrets, the technology, the Kaminoans, you know, you know uh, we, could, we could probably clone. But what they did, the reason we chose them, well, we, you know, Sifo-Dyas chose them. They could af- offer that little thing. That outside of a few, thi- a few uh, little bumps here and there, worked and what does this show begin with now you got me excited just what does the show begin with <laughs> inhibitor chips is very much in season one of, of, of mm-hmm. bad Batch. it's very much about what's going on all right i'm in if you're yeah. wrong i'm gonna cry well i'm i'm always happy uh, to be <laughs> wrong because it, it means the creators have a, a different exciting idea that i'll then be like oh that, that's great uh i just think with the the i don't want to rain on anyone's uh, Snoke, uh, Palpatine's, uh, you know, life extension mm-hmm. uh, uh, parade. It just feels to me like the, the. I think the clones need something to actually stop, to actually to have stop. A yeah. win at the the end of their journey. Um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. it also feels like I- anything that's trying to shut down people's agency or take over their minds in any way, that's the clones' battle to fight. I I would be thrilled and and hope for we get this reveal of what the horror of, of this program is. And then mm-hmm. the emperor and, or one of his creepy dignitaries <laughs> sidle up to him like, mm-hmm. and like, and you're working on the other thing too. And like, yeah, because yeah. it feel, feels to me a little bit like that's, this would be an official Imperial program and the get a new, more, more bodies for Palpatine Sith transference feels a little more. That's not on the books, you know, Tarkin <laughs> that is the way I feel. And, and I'm, I'm curious I, to see how it plays out. I I, th- I think even Tarkin, or maybe especially Tarkin, he's business minded for better or worse. That he'd be like, "Look, we let she on the weekends. Sheev does some witch spells, and he takes weekend trips to Exegol. We don't care. We don't know. I just got to keep the trains running here. That's my job. It's Tarkin Town, baby. I think that's what's <laughs> it. Uh, Maddie Gunner has a has, says that's a great way of seeing it. My mind immediately went to some kind of cleansing, creating a species solely obedient to Palpatine and eliminating those who oppose him. Yeah, that's creepy too. That's real, real creepy. It, it, it's creepy. Uh, um, what I like about the the chip and and you know I'm not, I'm not definitely not pinning you down to specifics or or thinking that it, it's this specific, but it's like the idea behind uh, the chips work for the clones. It's work for the citizens of this. It, it's the it's it keeps in line with Palpatine, the politician, who's like I'm providing you a safe and secure society. Don't you feel great? And you don't know the water's boiling around you, and you do not know. Mm-hmm. And it, it sneaks in the back door, so to speak. Yeah, like we've got this new program that can, you know, curb all the aggressive tendencies of these, you know, scary insurgents everywhere. You know, mm-hmm, volunteers mm-hmm. sign up. Like, yeah, there's a, a lot of uh, yeah. uh, creeptastic possibilities, I think. Creeptastic. So, um, yeah. I'm very, very uh, curious to see how it all plays out. Mm. Uh, Fennec Fan. <laughs> yeah, Fennec uh, Fan. Thank you very much for the kind super chat. Says, do you think Fennec is working with the batch to find Omega? She's on the boat when Wrecker jumps in after the crocodile grabs Hunter. It also looks like she's pointing a, a gun at the driver. Uh, thank you uh, to to those of you who pause the trailer and mm-hmm, and really mm-hmm. do find <laughs> the shadowy Easter eggs. I also watched uh, uh, Star Wars Explained Alex's uh, wonderful video uh, finding. Uh, mm-hmm. characters in, in the background and looking at arches to figure out Pabu's fate. Uh, for me, this, this is in that same ballpark of like, yep, there's there's pieces, there's clues uh, to mm-hmm, be figured mm-hmm. out when you see who, who all is in what scene. How do you feel about uh, Fennec and Cad Bane's appearance, Ken, and specifically Fennec's loyalties? Uh, I love that connection she had with Omega. It makes a lot of sense. And whether it's a job or whether there's some other purpose that we don't know about, I, I like that she's there. I'm intrigued by Cad Bane showing up. And, and he's got some plot armor, right? So we know he survives at least a little bit. Um, I 
uh, as far as her relationship, um, it'd be odd if she was completely empathetic at this point in her timeline, but maybe Fennec always had that heart of gold. She showed it, I thought, in season one. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, yeah, I just... I'm, tr- I'm trying to think of. Um, it's been a while since I've watched season one too, uh, and I'm yeah, po- uh, yeah, I'm going through the trailer too. I mean, uh, I think yeah. Fennec had a pretty, you know, there, there's a scene in Book of Boba Fett where you know later in her life, you know, Boba Fett shares his sort of a, a epiphany after mm-hmm. his time with the Tuscans of the, you know, basically, you know, it, it, it you, you, you can't get by alone. Can't get and by, she's yeah. kind of like, mm, I don't know about all this. And, and all throughout Book of Boba Fett, she's bonded to him, but she's not sure about this. Let's make everyone a pal uh, yeah. mission yeah. that Boba Fett is on. So I could definitely see her in her younger days um, having uh, m- more flexibility, more empathy and, and getting hardened as she goes. Yes. Uh, so so seeing her say, I'd, I'd put down any of these other clones, but uh I'll protect Omega because I I see mm-hmm. myself in her. Um, I think that mm-hmm. could fit in with her story. And if it doesn't go well for her, and if if Fennec does show some empathy, some kindness, and and pays That's for it, it yeah, that pays seems for it, like yeah. you know with like with a lot of great Han solo storytelling over the years, legends and canon of like I put my neck out there and I got punished for it, so I'm going to double down on my you know the only person I trust is me. Yeah, I think yeah. this is young enough in Fennec's career that maybe that kind of story would be possible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like yeah, yeah. this is where she forms her calluses a little bit. Maybe could be. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. That's a great way to say it. Um, how, are you excited uh, now to see Cad Bane? We live in a different Cad Bane world since we saw him in season one of Bad Batch. Where now we've seen live yeah. action Cad Bane. We know he survives. We know uh, uh, up until the era of Love the it. New Republic, um, they're they're you know. Yeah. Cad Bane's lights were still uh, blinking. Believe can, speaking of Truthers deaths and not out there, yeah. who feel he has survived <laughs> the fight with Boba Fett way in the future. <laughs> That's neither here nor there. But yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, are you excited to see him again in this era? Yeah. And if so, why? Yeah, I am. I really love this character. Have I mean, I can't tell you how many times I rewatched him entering the fight in Book of Boba Fett. It's like a WrestleMania quality entrance of of a match. Uh, he's like the Undertaker coming in. I I, I love it, and and. It, it uh, you know, I, I, we mentioned on on the show uh, we recorded yesterday and released yesterday. It's like, and PL, I know PLD Projects is in chats here, but Hondo Watch continues. I, I'm, I've <laughs> still got some Hondo hopes, and uh, maybe now Mieber Gascon hopes we'll do that. But 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 Cad Bane and Fennec showing up, and that under, it represents the underworld. It represents what's going on, and gives me hope that this will lead to uh, Boba Fett in this timeline showing up. I, I something I really want. And I know we're going to discuss it here, but just that was my reaction upon seeing Cad Bane. Fennec's cool, yeah. awesome. Love, I love Fennec, and Ming Na Wen as, as Fennec is, is amazing and uh, has her place in this story. But yeah, Cad Cad walking through the door, uh, it just expands the story into the the shadows of the underworld for me this season. Yeah, I'm I'm always happy to to see and and to hear Cad Bane mm-hmm. uh, in particular, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and I I hope he and Crosshair have a brutal uh, toothpick fight. Um, yeah, I would love that. Uh, so excited to see Cad Bane. <laughs> excited to see Fennec. But yeah. mostly it is for me in the category of unresolved business from Clone Wars and just unresolved business from the character of Boba Fett. Um, mm-hmm. You know, he, he gets introduced as this uh, child of of trauma in Attack the Clones, seeing yeah. his father's horrific death. Not only did yeah. Mace Windu cut my dad's head off, then he stared at it for a minute. <laughs> creepy, creepy. <laughs> um <laughs> To see Boba Fett take that crucial step of mm-hmm. I'm putting the armor on is just the cool. I've lived with Boba Fett for most of my life. That that that's cool. But it's also, you know, metaphorical of this young man could is at a crucial moment. And he could take a couple different paths, but he he puts the armor on, you know, mm-hmm. literally mm-hmm. and becomes the faceless, horrifying killer. Mm-hmm. If he's at your door, you're dead kind of uh, vibe. And the contrast with Omega uh, of, mm-hmm. yes. you know, the, these people who are siblings in that family is everything to Omega. And Boba Fett makes this choice to say, family's a weakness. It's nothing to me, uh, which which yeah. then has, a, I think, a wonderful payoff when we see where his journey goes in Book of Boba Fett. I just think that stuff is, is valuable and it could reflect on Omega. So it wouldn't just be like. Side episodes for Boba Fett, I, I think it, yeah. it would have to, to me, speak to Omega's journey. 
No, I mean, I know there's some people the fan of like, wouldn't it be ironic if there was two episodes of just Boba Fett and Cad Bane and Fennec Shand off the side? Uh, yeah, this keeps in line of, of uh, now 10 years of broadcasting here in Force Center where a great theory is a great theory, but we're always going to press you as to why. Uh, mm-hmm. Cool. You you want Boba Fett to show up. What's the why of it? And you, you're touching on the big whys, Joseph. It's uh, I put it down as a tale of two hearts, both mm. being uh, Alpha and Omega, Omega and Boba, uh, both with great reasons to be angry, fearful, and hateful, both bred of purposes that they uh, for purposes they didn't choose. Uh, we know where Boba ends up, and I mean that in a good way, looking ahead to the book of Boba Fett, exactly what you're saying, some of the things he chooses later on. But at this point, he's becoming the name to be feared. Right, he's Toro Calican of his timeline, mm-hmm. uh, um, and and how to, and that plays so well against someone just so compassionate, warm, and empathetic as, as, as Omega, who has yeah. you, it's 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 truly the Alpha and Omega, and it'd be odd. I'm on Boba Watch because it would be odd for this series <laughs> to end with this not to be addressed in some way. Uh, you got Emery calling her a sister. You got a lot of mi- mystery and intrigue. You know, uh, I think that's going to unfold, and and I don't always expect all the answers, and I'll and I'll be open to what's coming. But you got all these episodes until May first. I think there's a place for Boba, Boba as we knew him with, with around the time of the Saj, you know, with that different armor on, and Boba putting on that armor, and we know of the fabled lost scene that's out there uh, that many have seen of of how he got the dent, um, mm-hmm. uh, and and you could. I think it would be fun to incorporate, to finally incorporate that in. I, I think it would be interesting. Uh, but again, how it relates to Omega, there's great reason for Boba to be there and to show us two sides of this tale. Yeah. And, and uh, Asajj has, you know, a relationship uh, with Boba as well. Yeah. And I think that uh, points to even more uh, possibility. It gets yeah. my hopes up. Uh, I like having hopes. Um, we're going to talk a few. <laughs> Isn't it nice to have hope every once in a while? Hopes we're going to talk good. a, a just a a couple more details uh from the trailer uh but if anybody has any other questions we if you've asked a question so far and we haven't got to it i think we've got them started but if you have any other questions that you want or any Mm -hmm. super chats now's a a great time to get them in it's ken and i talk about any other details from the trailer Mm -hmm. uh that we wanted to discuss ken uh Mm -hmm. uh, what other details from the trailer or even what wasn't in the trailer, <laughs> but just hopes for Bad Batch season three. Yeah, I, I want to, you know, I'm going to, it's a minute three. A lot of people have had this guy. I, I, I'm, I'm late to the party on it. It's about minute three. Yeah, it's about minute three. Uh, minute, minute three seconds is what I'm, I'm meaning there. Is, is that tech? Is that tech revived? A lot of people are saying it has crosshair vibes, but it kind of has tech vibes. Now I'm just into wild conspiracy theories. Was that an alien or a stack of balloons that they a released minute three? on the footage? That's but, where we're going? A minute, one minute, three seconds. And oh. a lot of people have, uh, I've seen it on, on the internet. I spend some time on the internet and the internet people say that this could be tech. It could be uh, Crosshair at some point. But, I, you know, Crosshair's coming back to the fold. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm dead set on that. Uh, and, in fact, there was even maybe some uh, shots, you know. Uh, I don't have I don't freeze frame as much as I used to. But, uh, you know, there, it's possible he's back with the team. But I don't know. I, I and, and, and it, But I was having this conversation with some friends offline, Joseph. And it goes back to even what we're saying around the Asajj stuff. I, I, for one, would be very satisfied, though s- upset emotionally, that if, if Tech, in his sacrifice, that it's stuck. That makes the most sense for, to me. Um, but we didn't see his end. And I still think it's odd in a way that Tech is dead. Not in terms mm. of the story. The story moved me. It's a great. Mm-hmm. It's one of the best moments in Star Wars because it hurts so good. Oh, it's like it's like one of those ballads you hear on the radio, and you're crying in your car. We're eating Mackers and the, it, it, just stuffing a cheeseburger, and you're crying. And you're like, "This is my favorite feeling." That was tech. That was tech to me. It hurts so good. But we got one more season. We got like 15 episodes. Man, I just some there seems uh, there there could be some room for something spectacular like this. Yeah, I think uh, for me the 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 tech the tech pain was reopened. <laughs> It was really, it's, it's, yeah. uh, is, is long term uh, uh, watchers, listeners know uh, I don't mm. open a ton of action figures. But if a, if a, if, a, if a figure is not available in three and three quarter vintage, uh, my preferred, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'll get them in black series and I'll open them up. So tech is on my coffee table. Tech watches TV with me every day. Yeah. And so he's been alive in my heart and on my <laughs> coffee table. <laughs> in this trailer <laughs> and i rewatched the i was gonna rewatch the whole final episode and i was like oh yeah no this is no i'm gonna have fast forward uh yeah. past 
the fall of tech because it's so incredibly <laughs> brutally so well done that I honestly yeah. couldn't take it this morning. Um, yeah. yeah. I, I continue mm. to have wild uh, uh, theories about um, the, the fact that it's a it's a cruel moment. It's a you know manipulative, mm -hmm. devastating, effective moment when Hemlock says, "Sorry to hear about your your friend. What was his name? Tech. Mm -hmm. This is all we could retrieve." And throws the cracked goggles on the floor mm -hmm. of Sids. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. it's really a you know you're you're nothing. You have no power. You know, right. weaken you even more. Get you to try to do something stupid. All all that. Mm -hmm. But th this is a cloner who thinks mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that clones are property invaluable property because he might unlock more secrets particularly mm. from some of these weird clones you know yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, like like crosshair so i i i don't i don't uh, i would be happy to be wrong surprised to be wrong whatever i trust i really trust these storytellers maybe maybe tech himself is you know revived what yeah, i'm fascinated okay. by is the idea of uh well let's just make him again we have his dna mm, we'll make mm, mm. so it it is tech Mm -hmm. But it is tech without all of the experiences who made him this, right. the tech that we lost. It, there's something just it, it, very, this is how we use science fiction. This is how we use uh, a yeah. space fantasy to face existential questions mm -hmm. of if there is an exact copy of you, it is you. And yet without your experiences, the ones that make you you, how much of you is it? And like, can you imagine Wrecker trying to wrap his head on an around on an existential level that is an exact copy of tech but it can't be the tech that i knew because he didn't live through any of the things yeah. we did you know i have yeah. no idea yeah. if, if it fits in the story if they'll do it that way but to me that's where my mind goes of something to yeah. to add a, 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 an interesting conversation to the idea of identity and change yeah, I, mean, I don't. He doesn't like Mantel mix. Like, I, that'd be amazing. <laughs> um, but also, it just it confirms Hemlock as a tech bro. Look, we got this. We got this AI. Yeah, it's heartbreaking. <laughs> it's, it's like uh, Alex shows up to my house, and I'm like, I'm not. I'm not really Ken. I don't remember the time we got drunk in uh, Chicago. I don't remember it. Um, yeah, it, it is. Uh, that's painful. That's it, it, but it, yeah, no. Hemlock is a tech bro. Hemlock saying this. Hey, this AI is wonderful. What are you talking about? It, it, it it's no different. Uh, and that would really help drive it home and be an extra needle in the heart. Yeah, yeah. Big G says kind of like when Marvel brought 2014 Gamora to the present MCU. Yeah, I mm. think uh, I think that mm. would be very interesting. Ken, how are you feeling about about Crosshair? Obviously, we're gonna get uh, plenty of. Uh, crosshair well, it looks like we'll get uh, interactions with uh, omega it yeah. looks like there's a possibility of him you know uh, reteaming with with the clones all of this text tragedy yeah. happened because they weren't going to let their their brother crosshair you know rot in imperial yeah. hell um yeah i i feel like there it's i don't feel like crosshair is like going to i don't think it's going to be as simple as my bad i was wrong the right. empire's bad family's great you know happy yeah. to be back with you guys Let, let's open a, up a cold one <laughs> like yeah I, I don't think it's going to be that smooth so what do you think crosshair's relationship with his his brothers might be i i, I think you're right in this sense that it, it, he's uh there might be too much pride shame embarrassment uh, you know we've seen that in real life you know uh, people don't want to go back. We saw the pain of Kylo Ren feeling as though he can't go back. He can't return. He's lost forever. So destroy that past. And it's the love and compassion of both uh, his uh, dead father and, and mother as, as, as her passing mm -hmm. uh, happens that pulls him back. Um, there's all that kind of stuff. So I, th I think that could uh, that could play into it. Uh, I I agree with you. I don't know if it, I don't necessarily think it's going to be early. I think we're seeing this broken character who who just made this you know pretty powerful stand that episode late in season two is one of my favorites mm -hmm. in star wars and haunting is the word but it's a powerful choice he makes but it isn't a choice necessarily and he doesn't the circumstances don't allow for it, but it's like he doesn't make the choice and run away join the fight you're right um so i think it'll be a matter of themes of forgiveness themes of and you know where I've talked about this a lot. I don't necessarily think it directly applies, but like even when you have a break from someone uh, and, and trying to understand their point of view on it, trying to have some empathy for them, not understanding where you are in life. Why have you changed? And I, mm -hmm. you know, and, 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 and will you accept me back? So there's, if this is a found family unit, then this is the broken part of that family. 
uh, the acceptance will be based around that. Plot-wise, I hope it's some heroic moment. I like that idea. Um, I, I hope it has to do with Omega mm. and them finding a connection, some sort of uh, humanity or clomanity, if you will, uh, in, in that uh, kind of situation. <laughs> I, will. I will. I will. Clomanity. Uh, clomanity. Um, I, I'd like that. And, and I like that it might be small, right? That it isn't just this. He's already had this big giant moment mm -hmm. in that heartbreaking episode. But it would be small. It would be, it would be the empathy and warmth of Omega, one of her key traits that would yeah. help turn him. Yeah. Um, I, I love what you're saying uh, about Crosshair. Uh, people are uh, still reacting painfully to the idea of... Uh, <laughs> you you broke some hearts. Jay from Nowhere <laughs> says, ship of Texius. <laughs> the <laughs> Theseus. <laughs> Texius. Um, mm. Yeah, I, I think I, it, I think that text story could be heartbreaking, but I think, you know, th th there is something about it that is, um, I don't know... Yeah bitter bittersweet as well as uh horribly horribly heartbreaking don't disagree with anyone in in, yeah. in terms of uh crosshair i think maybe what it's always interesting when somebody can change but only up to a point and they're just for yes. whatever reason is like this is as far as i can change and mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. many mm -hmm. happy returns but i can go this far on the journey with you and and no farther and i think like Rewatching the final episode of season two, there's a tender moment where Hunter is 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 uh, telling Omega that he and Wrecker have decided like it's really time to stop fighting. It's time to stop mm -hmm. being soldiers. We think we can have a happy life on Pabu. Are you okay with that? Mm -hmm. If they've got to the point where like we're okay not being soldiers anymore, I can see where Crosshair so intense, so angry, yeah. so unwilling to give up the idea of being a soldier. Where he says, I cannot give up on being a soldier. I'm not going to go to some little water planet and, and fish and, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. and yeah. go, go to little hootenannies while you guys learn to play weird space flutes. <laughs> that ain't me. I can be a soldier and I can kill every mf -er yeah. <laughs> involved yeah. with, uh, with taking tech. I can take out anybody who's going to harm a hair on omega's head because mm -hmm. he went through that to to, to warn them that, that that omega was in danger right like that's yeah yeah uh that mm -hmm. that that bond with omega that willingness to be like not the kid not the kid is already there so i can see him being like i'm not here to patch things up i'm here to be a soldier and mm. basically like the the closest that crosshair can get to redemption is He'll star in, you know, his own Kill Bill films, like he's revenge. <laughs> he's, he's an he, instrument of revenge. He is taken. I've got a particular set of angry skills. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, like that. Yes. Mm. Crosshair is going to star in Taken. <laughs> I, I love that. Uh, there's been there's been a lot of uh, talk in the chat about Honda Watch. Uh, some people saying yeah. some real real sharp things. I think about um, Honda showing up in Skeleton Crew. <laughs> just because they're pirates, it might be a little bit more goony. Uh, Hondo loves yeah. uh, either befriending yeah. or kidnapping children. He does, yeah. <laughs> he kind of goes back and forth with that. Uh, been on the befriending side for a while now. I like but, that. Yeah. Mm. So, uh, are you are you still uh, are, are you with us on Honda Watch for Bad Batch? Or are you happy to see uh, old Hondo with the creepy long uh, uh, claw beard? I, it'll work. I mean, and I, I like seeing him and seeing him in line at uh, Rise of the Resistance. Uh, you know, <laughs> internet uh, forever be damned. Uh, uh, I'm on general Hondo watch. I think at the beginning of Bad Batch, especially going into season two, Hondo watch was high for Bad Batch. It just made sense, and we had the you know at times frustrating and annoying conversation about, about cameos in the series and what the definition mm. of cameo is. Uh, and and it's all been characters, and that's the point. I think Hondo not being in the series uh, so far. It shows the value in the characters they have decided to bring in, that they're done with great purpose, that it isn't just a checklist that, oh, Saw's there. No, Saw's, Saw brings this this vengeance and violence and chaos that leads to Tech's death. He's he's to, to blame for that as much as anyone, right? So mm -hmm. it's like they're all done with great purpose. So Hondo, if he shows up, he'd have to have great purpose. But also, I don't need Hondo to have that much great purpose. He could be selling them death sticks on the corner. I don't care. But Skeleton Crew... Is is uh, that's a pick to click for me? I'd love yeah, that. Yeah, that, that's uh, I, I would I would put my imaginary 
money on that uh mm -hmm. my, my mm -hmm. credits um yeah I, I would be thrilled for hondo to pop up and i think if he does we clearly have some bounties going on with yeah. ventress fennec cad bane and hondo trying to get his hand in, in that hondo having a relationship with sid if sid's story continues uh right, and right. hondo being almost <laughs> a contrast to sid would be yeah. fascinating I think the thing that's interesting to me about Hondo is in the Bad Batch era is that we have taken such a tour of the people who are impacted yes. by the Empire. And I think kind of Hondo at the height of the Clone Wars in his most like I'm a pirate with lots of power and all I care about is mm -hmm. money would have been like, I don't I don't care who's in charge as long as the you know, as long as my quacky and monkey lizards are laughing. And yeah. <laughs> but even in the Clone Wars, uh, reality uh, came to visit him there on Florum where. Yeah. He had his operation shut down. So I wouldn't mind following up on Hondo's realization of like, ooh, it does actually matter who's to me, who's yeah. in charge of the galaxy. Because we see him in such sort of diminished uh, stature in, yeah. uh, in Rebels that for me, that would be interesting to see his diminished stature uh, um, take effect immediately of he's not yeah. a power player anymore and he's never going to be again. Uh, yeah, I like that. Yeah, maybe he's the guy that gets in the juggernaut tank or something, you know? Yeah, who knows? Uh, who knows? Who knows? Who knows? But I, yeah, I think you're right. There, there, there's, there's, there exists an avenue to have Hondo show up and have show up with meaning here in this series. So, yeah. PLD, hold on. I'm not breaking your heart. I think we still have a chance. Uh, in, in, did you need or want to, to touch on um, Emery Carr? Uh, I, 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 along with uh, some other people, I also forgot that that's the actual final beat of uh, season right? two, the revelation that she is, uh, uh, that she claims to be Omega claims sister. Claims to be. Uh, no, other than I, um, uh, I happy to see you in the trailer, and that's a, that's a that was a great kind of shoe drop uh, ending and 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 classic, uh, you know, sitcom cliffhanger. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll we'll find out. Go to Seven Eleven and buy your Who Shot Mister Burns cups because we're gonna find out who Emery uh, Carr is later on. Uh, uh, Keisha, Keisha Keisha Castle Hughes playing her right. So uh, uh, I don't have a lot of thoughts on it, uh, but I'm uh, definitely intrigued. And I think it could, uh, you know, if, if she's calling Omega her sister, then have you met my, uh, I have a brother too. Have you met him, Boba? He's he's something. We don't mm -hmm. talk. And the possibility that is it Emery Carr or is that a huge program of uh, sister clones out there? Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, uh, that's, exactly. that's really, that's really fascinating. I mm -hmm. uh, am. Yeah, I don't have uh, a, a lot of. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, it, it feels entirely in line with all of the ideas of you know, what is the clone? Do the clones have agency? You know, it's all about family, all that. So I am mm -hmm. getting uh, very excited for that. Uh, mm -hmm. This is the last thing that I want to be sure to touch on, and that was uh, uh, Pabu, <laughs> uh, yeah. the the nice, beautiful, to me, straight from Legend of Zelda, Pabu mm -hmm. uh, uh, village. Mm -hmm. um, while you and I were doing our, our Bad Batch report during season two, and we didn't know if there was a season three, it hadn't been announced yet. And we were both getting kind of yeah. concerned that season two was the end mm -hmm. and they were heading toward a retire at, at Pabu. Yeah. The show also definitely did have that tension of, you know, when they're saying like, we're small, there's no reason for the Empire to ever come here you're waiting for yeah. the smash cut of the empires here right yeah uh yeah, yeah uh some some sleuths have done uh some careful examination of archways and, and feel there's yeah, yeah, evidence yeah. of uh things not going well for pabu so yeah where are you at with your pabu watch yeah, i mean look I, what when you and i had those thoughts going on it was it was uh it was there's some legit reasons to be almost concerned that this might end after two and what do we got? And we don't know. And there was some clues, but I think the, the emotional through line of, of where it might end up, I still think they could end up on Pabu, right? It's just, we might've been a year early. Uh, and there were some business thoughts behind that, I think, uh, to defend ourselves and our wild predictions. But, uh, um, mm -hmm. uh, it does represent yep. everything you're talking about. It does represent, you know, there, you, this isn't stopping yet uh, in, until everyone is safe. Uh, you got to keep fighting. You got to keep voting. You got to keep uh, defending. And, and, you know, I'd love to spend the rest of my days on Catalina Island, too, but I, I don't know if I'm going to. Um, you know, uh, it, it, the fight continues. But, and it'll be sad, man. That's such a wonderful, warm community, too. Yeah, I, I think for me, it, it, uh, a, a, I believe some of the detective work in the, um, in the trailer, mm -hmm. um, but also just felt like, oh, if it ended at season two and Pabu had been, just been introduced at the beginning and it could end with a bittersweet of like, 
how long will it remain peaceful on Pabu? Yeah, yeah. So be it. Yeah, but yeah. Pabu surviving an entire season is... Meh. I also just kind of feel like... Uh, I can't even remember what the actual time overlap was, but, you know, that great moment in Andor that great episode where he goes to the, to the beach planet because he's convinced, mm. you know, he's trying to convince his mom, we can go somewhere warm and go. safe. And that yeah. sort of portrait of like, you can, you can find somewhere to hide out like Tatooine or, you know, mm-hmm. whatever. Many people have found a place to hide out, but the idea of a beautiful, content, warm, safe place that is not touched by the empire isn't real. Mm-hmm. And, and the, the difference mm-hmm. between sort of, hiding out and scraping by versus being a really like a really functional happy community there's something in in the story of this era that that's part of the the tragedy that a community like pabu is not going to escape notice yeah i agree i agree no pizos for you there <laughs> no no pizos no for pabu pizos for you. <laughs> so very very sad uh uh you're, you're, Alex Damon and, and Molly Damon are the ones who were, were ref, uh, referring to their great detective work. Uh, Alex says, Molly showed me the archways and stuff and said she thought it was Pabu. And I yelled, no. <laughs> <laughs> so sad. Good job, so Molly. It is Good so job. sad. Yeah. And and maybe they'll all, you know, escape and maybe there'll be a, you know, maybe there'll be a Pabu path too. I don't, I don't mm-hmm. know. But we, yeah, we can path. all, I like that. We can all hope. <laughs> a uh, lot of paths. Yeah. A lot of paths, a lot of a lot of paths. Uh, anyway, mm. Ken, should we grab a, a, some of these questions? Yeah, we got some great questions here. Uh, starting from our good friend Jay from nowhere. Uh, how thrilled were you to defeat the Force Center timing curse? <laughs> the curse is real, uh, and, it, and it came back. That's how we knew the strikes had ended. Is news dropped on a Tuesday recently? Um, for uh, the uh, well, the movie you're right, the Mandalorian Grogu movie. After we put an episode out, it, you know, I, I it was amazing, Joseph, how close it was. I was mm-hmm. in Streamyard, and normally I might email uh, Jen a, a link with UCC, but we all have access to this account, and I, I lately was like, maybe I don't need to email. They could get in. They, they, they jo- this is Joseph's. He, he set up the account. I'm good, and I just and I, then I had this little doubt. I was like, yeah, I, all right, maybe I should email. And I went in the email and I literally saw the thing pop up. It just <laughs> literally just emerged. And I just, it, it, it set a special kind of panic because now it's like, oh, we haven't missed it. We have a chance to do this. But now I don't know what to do with this opportunity. Yeah, I, I found out because like I said on our episode yesterday, I, I entered our recording area here and Ken just wasn't looking at me or talking to me. Like, how rude. I was like this. <laughs> it was just, you I, you were drilled the into it. Like, right uh, 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 like, what? What? It's great. So, yeah, we, we were thrilled to defeat the Four Center Timing Curse, be able to talk about the big Assage uh, <laughs> pop on yesterday's deep dive episode, and then have, you know, a day to kind of look at yeah. some of it, uh, let it sink in, and, and uh, discuss it here. I, mm-hmm. The thing that it got me thinking about, Ken, is I feel like, um, I feel like over at uh, Lucasfilm, Disney Plus in particular, there, there's some effort to. Right, right the ship from the rocky waves and, and mm-hmm, communicate, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. which means I think that there are a, a lineup of decisions that they're trying to space out. So we had the Mando yeah. and Grogu movie news drop. Then we had a yeah. little break and we had the Bad Batch season announcement. We are waiting for uh, the, the skeleton crew announcement and yeah. in theory, yeah. the Acolyte announcement. Acolyte. So this dropping at exactly our recording time on Monday made me feel like we should start recording five minutes later, starting mm-hmm. like the next, not next week, <laughs> but maybe like two weeks from now, there might be the, the skeleton yeah. crew thing. And, and I'm on, I'm on pins and needles because I really bad batch. Cause it's longer. Even with mm-hmm. the double de- episodes, it's playing for a while. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I'm really hoping that they don't uh, play skeleton crew at the same time. And I know other, other fans yeah, are, are like, give me as much star Wars I- as you want. And I respect that. Um, but for me, mm-hmm. I really want them to breathe. I'd really like people to be able to discover Bad Batch. Yeah. Because it's what people are talking about. Uh, I, I hope yeah. Skeleton Crew is not released during Bad Batch's run. Yeah, I still like the the sweet spot of Skeleton Crew being that fall series, kind of a warm, f- friendly family yeah. environment. We don't know the exact plot details. Maybe it gets scary. Maybe it's haunting as well. But that seems a good spot. Acolyte, uh, Acolyte is a summer series. Uh, you know, we, uh, mm. I, I was, um, 
as I often do, uh, you know, chatting with our buddy Ken Plume. And he's, you know, that May 4th spot's open. That May 4th spot is open for something. And if mm. we immediately swing into the series, I don't know if they would do that. Uh, maybe it's just a Lego special or something coming on May 4th. But Acolyte in the summer just seems right. You know? Yeah. We'll oh, Acolyte in the summer. <laughs> Acolyte in the summer. It sounds like a a, a drink uh, that you yeah. can get. Uh, yeah. All right. You yeah. want to grab uh, another question? Absolutely do. Uh, this is related to Ventress. We got a couple of them here. So we got Pop uh, Culture Cult. What if this is a setup for her to show up in Ahsoka Season 2? And then Big, Big G says, do you uh, think we might get Asajj, Asajj Ventress in live action somewhere down the line? Uh, so sticking with those kind of questions there. Uh, Joseph, uh, beyond just uh, betting odds, uh, is there a place for her? Is there a purpose? Uh, I think you could find the purpose, but that's that's mm -hmm. a big leap still for characters to make. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for the Ahsoka Season 2, I just I continue to be fascinated with, is Ahsoka Season 2 going to focus on the adventures in, in the new galaxy on Peridia, yeah. uh, dealing with the, the quest for Mortis? Is it going to stay focused on that, or is it going to advance the whole story of the the New Republic era and mm -hmm. jump back to Ezra, Thrawn, the Night Sisters? I think that that which way is that going to go affects my thoughts about whether uh, um, Asajj would would show up in Ahsoka season two. Yeah. I, I think to me it seems like a very good possibility to see Asajj in live action. One because for me there's a why bring a character back unless you're going to create some timeline room where you can we can tell stories of her for for generations to come kind of thing like mm -hmm. even characters who have passed and we know their end date it's nice when there's room to tell more stories so the idea of asajj coming back and then being going to her her, her true end really soon doesn't feel right and i think uh, uh, the live action thing in the New Republic era really speaks to me because of the Night Sisters coming back. Mm -hmm. And if if mm -hmm. you know these Night Mothers have the different, they they seem pretty pretty much. Let, let's yeah. use dark magic to conquer. We should be in in power. Wh whose throats mm -hmm. can we rip with green mist? Right. They might have. They might have a. That might be a conflict with someone like Asajj who's gone on a different journey. So that makes me feel like she might have a real storytelling place in live action. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I think that's a good idea for the place. I think there's uh, you could always find that reason. For some reason, my heart is telling me I don't think we'll see her immediately. Uh, mm. I don't know why. I don't have a good reason for that. I, would I like to? Yeah, this is a great character. Um, God, find a way to get Katie Lucas to, even mm. if it's secret, write <laughs> write an episode of Ahsoka season three or something uh, with it. Uh, with that character, um, yeah, there's. I think there's great reason. It'd be fun. It'd be fun. It'd be. It'd be interesting. And, and having a, a badass uh, goth uh, space witch uh, <laughs> fighting things, uh, fighting the bad guys. Uh, I, I, I'd enjoy that. I, I, I don't know why. I, I Joseph. I feel like, not that this is the end, um, but it, 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 that I don't. I'm not. I, I think Barris will come back live action before. Mm. Mm. Well, that's an excellent segue. Um, to this question from Mike hey. Dorland. Ahsoka season three uh, for Barris, if Ahsoka comes back to the original galaxy. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think for the Asajj in live action, I think there is the like the how much storytelling are we going to get in live action in the New Republic era and how crowded yeah. is it? And how crowded, do, yeah. do you start to is it get frustrating if characters that we love appear and there isn't really room, room for them to grow? Um, but <laughs> Barris, Barris. Uh, yeah. Do you, do you how do you feel about her coming back in in I, I, I'm su two? I'm surprised she hasn't come back yet but also I like the idea that she hasn't come back yet because this is um it was a, uh, I, there might be a chance for for Dave and his team to finish that story a little more directly and little, than than like through a, the Favreau lens and that's not a bad thing I I I thought I I think there was good odds that Barris saving Grogu from the temple was it going to be a thing, right? I, mm. I was there was those clues on the wall, and that's why, you know, is is it is it Boba Fett's ship or a potato? Look at the freeze frame; we'll figure <laughs> it out. You know, it's like like what is it? Um, and I have fun with that. I have fun with that. Um, I don't want to overact with that. But but then, Kelleran Beck, it's just it's one of my most. It's just a beautiful moment for me as a Star Wars fan. Mm -hmm. Ah, I was alone at midnight, and I s stood up and went, "They did it! They did it!" 
and I didn't even know they were gonna do it. <laughs> like, you know, like that boat. So, so that made sense. So take Barris and put her somewhere else. There's so much to be mined with that Barris Offy character and her relationship to Ahsoka, her relationship to the Jedi Order, even. Mm -hmm. um, uh, <clears throat> and, 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 and a show, season one of Ahsoka, and a character, Ahsoka, that is always dealing with that question, like you and I have talked about, of what does it mean to be a Jedi? Mm -hmm. Barris is one of those characters that had some solid ideas a righteous beginning that became uh, you know succumbed to the the the, 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 the whole picture uh, not unlike a Dooku where you start from a good place and then you make or Sagarera you make good spot you, you start from a good place and you end up in a bad spot so Barris has a lot to offer to it um as far as next season I don't I mean, a third season I, I would need her I need them all to get back to the galaxy yeah or you know maybe maybe she is on a Maybe she's been on a, a a quest for for similar answers and powers. That that's mm -hmm. my two bears thoughts. People have been mentioning Tales of the Jedi a lot, which I um, love, but I keep kind of keep forgetting that that is another place to kind of I love that yeah, deal love with that. Uh, big uh, uh, dangling threads yeah. of characters, and uh, we're all uh, getting excited about you know Barris is a sort of a big bad for Ahsoka, but I can also see it where she is an Inquisitor. For a little while and walks away from that mm. and it's a beautiful 15 minute tales of the jedi mm. um yeah yeah, kind yeah, of yeah. Thing. um but yeah the other thing that's really interesting to me about it is when i try to think of what was barris's perspective and where would she mm -hmm, end mm -hmm. up by the new republic mm -hmm. uh, era if she didn't mm -hmm. you know join the inquisitors because she wasn't you know maybe she could have been broken right and i think that's a lot yeah, of what a lot yeah. of characters think of like well She's exactly the kind of character that Palpatine targeted somebody who doubted the Jedi and went too far and could uh, could be broken. So the, the Inquisitor thing makes sense. But her perspective is shockingly aligned with Balin's to me mm. of mm. I'm not a Sith. Yeah, the Jedi were so yeah. horribly wrong in their mm -hmm. use of violence that it's morally acceptable for me to use a little bit of violence to mm -hmm. hold the Jedi for account. I mm -hmm. feel the Jedi have killed millions, so it's morally acceptable for me to kill a few to point that out and stop it, which is kind of what Balin is doing in, in my reading, in my opinion, yeah. in Ahsoka. Yeah. So I wonder yeah. if there is any sort of like, I want Balin to be his own character, but like, could Barriss be a part of Balin's journey and a part of his perspective? What I like about what you said is going to like the Inquisitor angle. Could you do a... a a, a bent then broken version of Barris Afi who Palpatine breaks down the Grand Inquisitor Vader or whatever yeah and, and that would be interesting um, that could work uh, the, but the Barris we saw and the, the Barris in that wonderful arc uh, that leads to the, the big powerful moment with Ahsoka I, she, she's she's not a both siders in a, an annoying political way but yeah she's not she's not there to pick up arms just simply against the Jedi and join the 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 the, the empire fighting them or, mm -hmm. or the, it just doesn't track the Balin thing that's an interesting thing I don't necessarily think you're suggesting or we think that she's going to be there waiting for Balin you know when he gets down from the statue hey oh you found it um but that's it's it's the ideals behind it and, and but they again, are kind I, of aligned yeah there I, I really agree with you on that that's actually very interesting uh of of uh man those they all really sucked right but I'm going to do a little bit of what they did so I could defeat <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah james uh livingston his uh, yeah i don't see barris for fights actually going dark side she was an idealist yeah and i think that, that to me is what's most interesting about her character is yes left left to follow her own pursuits did she escape order 66 and and mm -hmm. hide out uh, i think the inquisitor story would be uh <laughs> as i was saying this uh so is uh amaranth i think anyone can be broken yeah. for the inquisitorious and i think that would be the story of We've got a lot of great uh, Inquisitor stories, including um, yeah. Highway Johnny here is saying, speaking of Inquisitors, I am reading Rise of the Red Blade right now, and it is so good. I've gotten some great Inquisitor stories. And mm -hmm, I think mm -hmm. for, for Barris, I just, if there's an Inquisitor story where she starts out as an idealist, she has no desire to just be an instrument of death and, and destruction for the yeah. Emperor, but she gets broken by the Inquisitorious. How can you make that a little bit more of a unique story for her? <laughs> Yeah, even even in uh, you know what's the video game that Alex loved that I screamed and threw my controller at Fallen Order? Yeah, because uh, uh, the gameplay uh, with the character that was second sister Trillia, Trilla, mm -hmm. not Trillion, not Trillion from Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. What a reveal! But a reveal. Uh, <laughs> Arthur Dent, Secret Jedi, Secret Jedi. 
I, I love that part of the game. I think that's a great part of the story and a great character. But I, I, I think it's not that we, we, we already we have some great examples of that. So that's why I like what you're pitching of, of it could be something something else. I do want to highlight real quick, uh, Amaranth also had this, pieces for Pabu and Acolyte in the summer sound like YA novels. <laughs> <laughs> now I want to live in that world. Uh, uh, we're going to yeah. get to the other questions, but... <laughs> Tease it, Alex. <laughs> Uh, we, uh, Ken, we've, we've been shamefully remiss in talking about one of the most important characters of Bad Batch. Uh, Brent Bums standing by says, just tuning in, Gonky, where is he? Is he safe? <laughs> is he all right? Also, I didn't spot the Havoc Marauder. I've got a bad feeling about this. Yeah, Gonky. Yeah, oh, yeah. man. Gonky is all Gon of us. Gonky, he? tell you what, Gonky is going to be, when this, when the sun sets, they are going to be on Pabu. They're going to be rebuilding. And Gonky's going to be one of the last shots we see of him just rebuilding, staring off in the sunset. We're going to have a path for the Jedi, a path for the mm -hmm. clones, and mm -hmm. a path for Gonky to get yeah. him safe. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, my own Gonky is barking in the background. Thank you, Trini, uh, Freddy. <laughs> uh, 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 Trillia, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Ethan, sorry. I, I always throw a little uh, display for the first time, struggle with the gameplay. The gameplay of those games frustrates me. The stories are solid. I, I do love the stories. Story, uh, Yeah, no, the story no of the first game is, uh, yeah. is amazing. And if I ever yeah. get around to the, the uh, other game, I'll just be playing it on whatever it is, uh, narrative mode. Story, narrative mode. Storytelling yeah. mode. Uh, I, I'm not if, playing this to be <laughs> deeply challenged as a gamer mode. If I have to do another Star Wars game where I have to climb, swing, jump, climb, swing, run, jump for 15 hours, I'm going to lose my mind. All right? Sorry, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> Those games are perfect in every way, says they Alex. Are. They are. Uh, they are. This is great. Uh, we got a couple more uh, questions here as we, I think, head in, into the general wrap-up zone, right, Ken? Yeah. We do, we do, we do. Thanks for the super chats that we got today. Thanks for hanging out with us here. Uh, I got the gonky. I got a question, says Rebel Intelligence. Uh, so we're talking about episode titles. Are there going to be two episodes for the finale or just one? Good question, because in my quick glance, I thought one, but I believe the it's Calvary. Within... And I, I, I've been saying it, wrong. Calvary, because I always say things wrong, like uh, Calvary Chapel Church of uh, Costa Mesa. Uh, the Calvary has arrived. Looks like one, but that's got to be supersized, right? Yeah, I think, I think for me, uh, again, I've had a lot of... Um, of faith in, in in these storytelling choices so it, it's listed as is one episode in this graphic uh but I, I think there's a question of how long that episode is and if you know i think sometimes there there are shows that do like the the big action in the penultimate episode in the final episode is you know it's still it's still plot it's still high stakes yeah, yeah. but a little bit of the the grace note you know so mm -hmm, i just gotta mm -hmm. i trust it to be the length it needs to be I uh, love that there. Yeah. And also Brent Bums standing by. Cozy game uh, where you're okay is Gonky restoring power across Pabu. Yeah, that that's there you are. He's just the correct version. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's what I want. I want Gonky to be just restoring the power to Pabu to end the show. Yep. Uh and, and Highway Johnny says, I beat it on the hardest difficulty. Ha. Oh, well, <laughs> Highway Johnny man. M much um, much pride uh, to you. Yeah. I'm, I'm extremely uh, yeah. happy. Whatever, uh, whatever, <laughs> whatever, Charlie. I got. Um, I'm playing the Super Bowl tonight on All Pro. Okay, we'll see what you do with that. Okay. Uh, it, um, it would take yeah. me a million years to to beat it on the highest level. It's uh, we're we're talking the last game that I obsessively beat on on like every possible level was mm -hmm. the uh, Nintendo games game uh, uh, cube. Rogue Squadron mm. 2, Rogue Leader. That was the last right. game where I was like, I don't care what it takes. I'm getting I it think, all. I think you can retire on that. That is amazing. There are 15 episodes instead of 16 like last season. Perhaps that mass that 15 is just the length of two, says PLD. Mm. Uh, Paul at PLD Projects. Yeah, uh, that, that's possible as well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, it's it's going to be an event. I'm looking, for, I'm, I'm looking forward to, but also I'm sure it's going to be bittersweet. Uh, we kind of talked about this one from Maddie, but I want to make mm -hmm. sure that there's a no more Pabu trauma that we want to in <laughs> inflict on everyone. Uh, uh, Maddie Gunner says, do you believe Pabu being invaded is the Empire's way of saying there's nowhere we won't go to find you, even this peaceful island that has no yeah. part in the fight? Yeah. Um, yeah, I think it's really that. Let's make an example of them, because I think that that's what was uh sad about those Pabu moments when they really explained like, well, they got they got just no reason to mm -hmm. attack us there's no reason for them to come here mm -hmm. but the pabu community being so of the star wars spirit of empathy and inclusion of like clones you can stay here and you can be a valuable part of the community and they're like oh but the clones are gonna mm -hmm. bring the empire 
And I, yeah. I think it's going to be that like this, the same way that, you know, Alderaan was made an example of because that, you know, yeah, yeah. uppity Bail Organa, you know, yeah, we've put up yeah. with him for as long mm -hmm. as we can. This is what you get when you. So I think it's like, how mm -hmm. dare you? Yeah. You know, yeah. it, if there are, you know, they talk, uh, there, there's a fear in that Imperial meeting at toward the end of season two about a clone uprising. And mm -hmm. that could be to me, like, does, does Rex activate everyone? And it, it, it is like a clone insurgency across the galaxy. And there's a real crackdown on clones. And Babu is made an example of. It'd make a, Yeah. Yeah. It would make a lot of sense. The clone, the clone uh, insurgency would make a lot of sense to the Star Wars story overall. Going back to even what I was saying, what I love about Bad Batch, and how we're, it, it made me remind reminded me the heart of the clones that maybe mm -hmm. the idea that yo uh, it's a trivia question oh the clones were replaced by stormtroopers, the TKs and this these units man there's so much the fact that this series is that story uh, relates to the, what you're talking about there but that's why the Empire would be so upset about that little island yeah uh, Greer Galloway here bringing back some video game memories real Come quick. Uh, Greer says, I remember the uh, Nintendo 64 Rogue Squadron being a nightmare to get all the gold medals shooting individual troops in an X-Wing is not that easy, LOL. You just it's brought not. back that memory because I think I, I did get everything in Rogue Squadron, uh, the the fun one for N64. It's such a weird memory to be a happy memory. Ken, there's mm -hmm. a like Saturday morning. It's like, I'm loving this game. It's so great. I just can't figure out how to get this next level of medals because they, they want me to have this many defeats or kills. And I was like, I've blown up every ship. And then I was like, oh, look at the little people on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> and realizing you just need to strafe the ground to strafe. with the X-Wing, with people who are trying to run to safety and going, what a great Saturday morning. I figured it out. Like, it's oh, Star Wars, baby. It's yeah, Star Wars. Yeah. Would it, would it Antoc Krieger make the game? <laughs> yeah. Jay Vernor is shooting individual troops in X-Wing. It's not that good guy I, no, it, was, it was weird 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 that's weird a, that's amazing uh final question i have in the hopper here joseph from robert meadow meadows thoughts on what we'll see from wolf this season he was in, in seasons one or two so i'm excited to see where he's at during this period looks like he's still working for the empire in the trailer yeah he he pops up there looks like he's still uh on that side uh, yeah we do know where he ends up and he's 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 i love wolf i love uh uh, meeting up with Wolf and Gregor and Rex in Rebels. It's very, uh, it's just an effective use of these characters and, and fun and warm. Uh, but yeah, um, I, 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 you talk about a clone uprising, clone insurgent, uh, insurgency. We, you know, we still got Commander Cody. I think there's some stuff to do with him possibly. And, and I like this idea. Uh, right. Cody's still out there. He didn't die. Oh, no, we got, we got Cody in that great, okay. uh, episode with Crosshair. Yeah. Yeah. Crosshair. I was like, in my head, I was like, oh, wait, we, he didn't die. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah, I, I don't really know what to expect, but I like that he's there. And again, it, it, it's it's not just picking up stories; it's also looking ahead to stories, and and that you can go back and fill out those blanks and fill them out effectively. Yeah, to me, it's the the it feels uh, Wolf's presence uh, feels in line with the finish all business, except for maybe mm -hmm, Baron. Mm -hmm. uh, finish all business, uh, Wolf. Mm -hmm. I've been, I've loved Gregor's appearances in Bad Batch. Yeah. And knowing Rex Gregor Wolf are the the clones we get to spend some quality time with in Rebels. Also, uh, feeling uh, like you know Wolf's a clone trooper that a lot of people have a strong connection to. And there's the, I believe there's a line in the Rebels of like you know we all we all made a different choice. We all removed our inhibitor chips. So kind of mm -hmm. figuring out mm -hmm. where is he in in the path? Is he somebody who still needs to be? Uh, convinced to yeah. make a different choice as he's still being controlled. What what's going on with him? All all those questions are, That's are interesting. Love that. Love that. Uh, so there you go. That's it. I think in terms of questions saved, we could start to round out our show here. Ethan does yeah. this one off topic, but is anyone else excited about the Black Series Jordica that was showed off today? I saw that and I, yeah, I don't collect as much anymore, but that might be on the list. I like yeah. that. Yeah, uh, the it's a, it's a literal a little too literally physically large for my incredibly limited <laughs> space <laughs> shelf space. Uh, so I was excited for others and uh, already slapping my own hand to say, "Don't get that one." Don't do but it. Very very cool and and okay. wonderful to see the uh, Phantom Menace celebration. The yeah, absolutely twenty five years. That's crazy. Well, uh, I think we've done it. Thanks for everyone who's uh, hung out with us today on this uh, bonus live stream. Audio version will be up on the podcast feed. Thanks for uh, 
Joseph, getting me through uh, the searing pain in my back right mm -hmm. now. Uh, I'm not a hero, but I'm hanging in there for all of you. Uh, and uh, we have a lot of fun. And more of these on the way. We'll be love just jumping on live. But we're not mm -hmm. done. This Friday, Joseph, we're going to be live at 2 p.m. Jennifer's going to join us. We're going to hang out with all of you for some Star Wars questions and questions about pop culture and life as well. Yeah, yeah, 2 p.m. Pacific. Uh, it will be a, a real uh, everything center. Definitely, of course, Star Wars, mm -hmm. but uh, any other pop culture uh, that you want to discuss? Uh, anything with the uh, with the Oscars with art? <laughs> I don't think we've seen all the Oscars movies, live stuff. Anything that you want to <laughs> chat about? I'm sure we'll have a lot more great uh, Bad Batch chat. And we see some people yeah. who, who aren't able to join us until later. Uh, we'd be happy to continue to discuss Bad Batch um, and, and get even more of Jennifer's thoughts about yeah. Asajj and, and Barris and some of these really important characters. Love that. Yeah, I'm sure we'll be discussing on Friday how the Academy Award voters did not understand the plot of Barbie. We'll talk about that. <laughs> we'll talk about that. Uh, all right, that is it. We'll see you all. Uh, thanks for listening. This has been Four Center.